Hey guys, this is the last video that I am sending to you about our worksheets. Oh my goodness, can you believe it? Almost done, you can do it, you're doing great. All right, so for our devotions this morning, our name for God is, he, wait, is this what I wanted? Sorry, wrong page. The Lord of Heaven's Armies, Jehovah Sabaot. All right, angels all around. Psalm 2410 says, the Lord of heaven's armies, he is the king of glory. And this is from 2 Kings 6. The king of Syria began to fight the Israelites, but every time the Syrians planned a battle, the Israelites found out about it and went somewhere else. Who is telling the Israelites about our plans? The king of Syria wanted to know. He couldn't figure it out and it bothered him greatly. So the king called his servants and said, Please tell me who among you is for the king of Israel instead of for us. How can we surprise the Israelites with a battle if someone keeps telling them where we are? None of us is the problem, the king's servants told him. But Elisha, God's prophet in Israel, knows your plans and tells them to Israel's king. Well then, the king of Syria said, Go find out where this Elisha is. Then I can send soldiers to capture him. The servants searched for Elisha. We have found that Elisha is in the city of Dothan, they told the king. So the king sent a great army with many horses and chariots, and they surrounded the city of Dothan. In the morning, when Elisha's servant went outside, he saw the Syrian army everywhere he looked. Soldiers with horses and chariots circled the city. Oh no, Elijah, Elijah's servant cried. What are we going to do? Elisha came outside and saw the army too. Don't be afraid, Elisha said. Those who are with us are more than those who are against, or those who are with them. <laughs> Sorry. Elisha's servant didn't see anyone with him, and Elisha. Then Elisha prayed, Oh Lord, please let my servant see what I can see. Okay. There we are. There's, see the whole army over there? Ready to capture Elisha? Hmm. God answered Elisha's prayer. Suddenly, the servant could see what Elisha saw. An army of angels, horses, and chariots of fire covered the mountain and surrounded Elisha and his servant. They had been there all along, sent by God to protect Elisha from the enemy king. When the Syrian army came down to the town, on the town, looking for Elisha, Elisha prayed again. Lord, make them blind, he said, and God did. He confused the Syrian soldiers and led, and they let Elisha lead them right to the king of Israel. The soldiers never knew it was Elisha or that he was leading them to the king's, the Israel's king. When they reached the king, Elisha prayed for God to let them see again. And he told the king, give them something to eat and send them back to their master. So the king of Israel threw a big feast and then sent the soldiers away. Syria didn't bother Israel again for a long time. There are the, there's the angel army. That's kind of cool. So what does it mean? Let me go back. Jehovah Sabaoth. In the Chronicles of Narnia books by C.S. Lewis, there are two worlds. When the children are in the professor's house standing in front of the wardrobe, they can't see Narnia. But after they go into the wardrobe and discover it, they know Narnia is always there. We can't see heaven, God, or the angels in heaven, but they are all real and always there. God rules over both what we can see and what we can't see. He's the Lord of heaven's armies, Jehovah Sabaoth. Elisha's servants, servant didn't need to be afraid, and neither do we, because God commands a heavenly army that fights for us and protects us when we need help. Dear God, even though I can't see you or your angel armies, I know you are there watching over me, and I am glad. Amen. You can look up a verse to look up would be Psalm 46, verse 7. Take a look at that one. All right, so that's the last devotional we're going to do for the school year. Oh, sad. Okay. All right, like I said the other day, I just have just a few little things I want to talk to you about. In second grade, actually, one of your things is to tell you to not do something on your paper. Aren't you happy for that? Okay, so, ah, I didn't get out my cards again. You guys, <sighs> clearly, my brain is not all the way here either. So, first grade, you have two new special sounds. Oops, 
Sorry. And they have the last, almost, we almost got through all the special sounds this year. There's just a few more that we didn't make it to. So we're just gonna take a look at two today and then you've got your papers to do. So we have U-R-E says, Ur in pure, you're in pure. I said it wrong the first time. Oh, you're in pure. U-R-E says, you're, you're, you're. Can you say that with me? You're in pure. U-R-E says, you're, you're, you're. Doesn't that feel weird? Does it feel weird? You're, you're. I don't know. Okay. <laughs> Repeat after me. Secure. Impure. Cure. Figure. Figure. And securely. All right. You're impure. And then we have chur. Pasture. We say it, it sounds more like a CH sound, chur, pasture. Because we don't say pasture, the pasture, do we? That'd be weird. So, chur in pasture. T U R E says chur, chur, chur. <laughs> I know, sometimes our language is very weird. Future, scripture, picture, capture, fracture, and moisture. All right, in first grade, that's all I have I need that I need to talk to you about today. So, whoa, I don't even need to talk any math with you because it's all, you got this. You got this. Okay, second grade, just a few little things today is you have a new concept today that we're going to talk about a uh, and an, the two words, a uh, and an. And there's actually a rule that goes with them. We use the word a uh, or a, we usually say a uh, though, right? We use the word a uh in front of a word that starts with a consonant. So it could be a book. I read a book. Oh, that's an A. Oh dear, I got all excited here. Now I'm gonna write things wrong. A book. So because it starts with a consonant, we use the a, uh, okay? Or, but if a verb, if a word starts with a vowel, then we use the word an. So we have uh, with the word eagle. How about with eagle? An eagle. An eagle, a uh, book. Because it starts with a vowel, we use the word an. All right, so that's gonna be something you're gonna be practicing today on your phonics paper. Um, and so that could go for anything. A cat, an envelope, or an igloo, or a locker, or an elephant, right? Or an octopus. I'm coming up with all these animal names now. So you can think about that. It's an goes with the vowel, a uh, goes with the consonants, all right? And then the last thing I need to tell you is that on lesson 140, which I believe is your last, I think that's your last math page. Yep, on your last math page this week, I, well, on the last two, tomorrow, Thursday and Friday's math papers, I crossed out a section because we're just not going to get to learn that part this year, and you'll learn it next year in third grade, so don't worry about it. But um, So I crossed out a part, but on the very last page, I forgot to cross out another part that has to do with the stuff that we just didn't get to learn yet. And so on the front of Lesson 140, you do not have to do number four. The last part, it's got a bunch of boxes in it with, I think with numbers in it. I don't have it in front of me. Um, but so number four on the front of lesson 140, you do not have to do that one. So don't stress about it. All right, I mean, if you wanna try to figure it out, you can. If you do it and I won't mark it wrong or anything, but you don't have to do that part. So I hope you have a wonderful day and you're almost there, just a few more days to go. You can do it. Bye.